the, the previous Saturday on the, so on the 28th, I think. And so did you come here because you knew something was going to happen? I or you just came here, you thought, you know, cool, Hong Kong, nice place. I, I just happened to be uh, the right place um, at the right time. I That's not answering my question. Did you come here because you knew something was going to happen? Did you know Occupy Central was going to happen? I didn't know Occupy you didn't Central, know? no. I was uh, in India, in Bangalore on, um, on Friday. I flew on Red Eye uh, to Hong Kong, so on Friday night. And I was here... This uh, is Friday the... Twenty, before? Yes, 27, okay. I think. Uh, and um, so I was flying to, to Hong Kong. I arrived in the morning of the 28th, uh, mainly in transit. Uh, for uh, because I, w I had meetings in uh, in Shenzhen on Monday and then I had to f fly back from Hong Kong to go back to San Francisco and um, uh, so and I just want to say that I like when I am in transit here because I love Hong Kong so yeah but you're in transit you're in the airport right I mean transit for two days oh, okay cool. for the weekend nice and um, on Saturday I was still complaining uh, because I did not understand why we don't have any user in uh, or oh, very few users in Hong Kong. So when you arrived, you had three. I mean, I had downloads. A few, a few thousand people. Okay. But uh, nothing really significant. And uh, on Sunday, I was on the fire chat, and I stopped to see a lot of uh, new groups of discussions, and I stopped to see tons and tons of messages and people posting. And I, so I quickly made the link with the the protest because I heard about the, the, the about the Occupy. And uh, I mean, it was um, such uh, um, how would you say? Without anything, we we encountered in the past in terms of size and uh, numbers of messages posted per, per minute. So, so you, you didn't come here to promote FireChat. I thought you'd come here with a mission. I so thought you, you know, your so your venture capitalists in America saying, "Yo, man, over you go." That I so thought was a mission. Like, I mean, the, the mission, wherever I am, I still have the same mission. Which is? Uh, which is to provide, uh, hopefully one day, free internet for everyone, and uh, access to information, to knowledge, and um, I think with the technology we developed, and FireChat is participating to that. So, uh, Good mission. That's my uh, full-time mission. <laughs> and uh, when I was here, it was just yeah, being two days off, during the weekend in Hong Kong before I go back to uh, do continue my meetings in um, in China and then go back to so you saw you saw usage and what did you go did you did you say I've got to get out on the street or so I uh, it was in Cantonese so I presume being French and living in San Francisco your Cantonese is quite limited right it's very limited so I, what I did I took a lot of pictures of what was happening on the app and I sent them back to my office where I have uh, Do Jun who is a uh, one of uh, my employees who is Chinese, and I said, um, what do people say, can you tell me? And, uh, and what did he say? It's like, tanks are coming, quick, run. That's one of the messages I saw, but it, which went on for about half an hour. Probably uh, people joking on the app. Yeah. Are, it's an app also you can do dating, uh, tell jokes. And uh, The students aren't dating now, they they're, they're focused on changing governments. Yeah, it's not a party, exactly. So I'm curious, so there you are, you weren't here, it's really interesting, you weren't here for that, you were on, in transit, and you see lots of downloads, and then what do you do? You go, let's so buy some ads, or you go... No, so then I, um, so I, I tried to figure out what, was, what people were saying on the app. So I, I, I realized uh, that it was used by the students and the, uh, everyone to spread information about how to organize, where to go, uh, what kind of uh, a lot of logistic elements uh, so um, you know, supplies for water for a red ribbon for a uh, yellow ribbon and for uh, umbrellas umbrellas absolutely and uh, because of the I mean it was so important I decided to stay brilliant so you sit there and so at what stage did it become you know something that you thought was serious at what stage did it start ramping up was it i saw it was serious when i started to see uh like uh something i think it was like 30 um yeah 30 thousand people on the app simultaneously posting or looking at the screen of their phone in the city of Hong Kong only connected to the internet at that time 
Is that a number that you hadn't reached before as, as an app? I mean, Never at a single time in, in a single place. I mean, it's... Because uh, it's been used in Taiwan before, is that it right? It was used in Taiwan where we got, uh, I mean, a lot of installed also because the app was, uh, went number one into the app store uh, right after the event. But without any, um, I mean, th there was no comparison possible. It's pro in an order of magnitude, it was on Sunday like 25 times, 30 times bigger than anything we ever observed. So why do you think people in Hong Kong have a, have a particular fascination for, for this? I mean, you know, you're in Hong Kong, so the benefit is you have access to Chinese platforms, and you have access to American or European originated, or Israeli originated platform. Why, why would they choose FireChat? I think for two reasons, um, or, or maybe more, but the two uh, practical, obvious reason is one, because it's an easy way to broadcast information to uh, an important number of people, even if you are not connected to them. You just need to share the same interest, or, uh, so we do that through the fire chat rooms, or through chat rooms, and people can join these chat rooms openly, you don't need to be invited, you, you just need to share the same interest. So you can basically broadcast to 10,000 people and information, especially for posts like the one that, that happened, uh, about uh, the logistic, what people need, what needs to be done. And then uh, suddenly you have uh, 10,000 people on their smartphone that receive uh, a notification saying, whoa, uh, message. And uh, then you go there and you see the whole conversation uh, happening. So it's a, it's a, it's a perfect tool for uh, broadcasting information to large audience, um, because if you had to do that, for example, in a traditional messaging app, you would have to friend uh, everyone. Uh, but I, I want to jump back a bit, because I actually I heard your story last night, and I found it fascinating, because actually, FireChat has got little to do with you actually your dream, right? So you have a company called Open Garden. Yes. Can we reverse to Open Garden? and explain what that is, because from what I learned yesterday, fire chat is like your little finger. You know, there's, it, it was you've a got a whole body behind it, right? So can you explain, I mean, you have uh, you know, ambitious goals. Can you explain a little bit what it's all about? Uh, sure, so I can go back to that. Maybe i give you the second, uh, it's going to make the link with, with Open Gallon. And the okay. second reason why people use this app is because uh, it uses a technology we developed so at Open Garden for more than three years, which is called peer-to-peer -peer mesh networking. And what this technology... That sounds really, really techy, peer-to-peer. Uh, how many people in the room understand peer-to-peer -peer mesh networking? Smart meters. It's a smart what? meter technology. American. Always has this talk out. <laughs> Anybody else understand peer-to-peer -peer net mesh networks? Huh? Right, let, let, I want to so, understand what it so is. I'm Tell gonna, us what it means. I'm going to explain it? that in layman terms. And so you, each of us have a smartphone uh, today. And uh, these smartphones, they have uh, radios. And these radios normally connect to uh, a cellular tower or they connect to a Wi-Fi hotspot. We use these radios to interconnect uh, the smartphones directly uh, to one another, creating a daisy chain of smartphones, which happens uh, when you have many people who have the application, which happened during the... Uh, the protest in Hong Kong, creates like a, a mo local mobile network without the need of having uh, access to uh, the network of a cellular uh, mobile operator uh, or to have access to a, a Wi-Fi hotspot. And once you have that network that's created, basically you can um, do everything you can do on a traditional network. So you can exchange information. And we, we saw that the best way to demonstrate this, the potential of this technology was to bring it uh, from package the technology into a messaging a social uh, networking experience with FireChat. And so when we launched the app, it was a demo. Um, we quickly realized we were onto something because uh, it got so much success since the when, when did you launch it? It was launched on March 20th. Okay. Was that linked to some revolution going on around the world? Or was it, so was the, it, if I tell was you it a French holiday? Or what, what, what was the reason? So if I tell you the, the, the whole story, uh, actually I had a only one developer at the beginning who was working on the app, and uh, I wanted a proof of concept. So he was in the middle of all the other developers who developed the technology. I said, just do the, a messaging app. Uh, we need to, to throw it onto the market, see what happens. And he was very slow. Like, he should have launched the app in October. Yeah, but he was one guy, right? Yeah, but he was, I mean, he was having a lot of help. So okay. he, was, he, he, he was supposed to launch the app in, uh, I think, in October last year. 
And uh, so it took much more time, but finally it arrived, I think, at the, at the right timing because it came just right after the acquisition of WhatsApp. So all the messaging apps were also trendy and, uh, and, uh, and it happened to be a perfect timing. Did he also design the logo? No, the logo was Sign made up. by the same designer who made the open logo that I have on me. And uh, I don't see the link. That's a tree. The other one is like a red hand. Yes, and uh, the story is when we launched the messaging app, we were looking for a name, and uh, we wanted to use this Hawaiian uh, hello um, name uh, Aloha. But we figured out that many mobile applications were named Aloha. So uh, we looked at the, uh, at the trademarks and everything, and it was pretty tough probably to try to trademark it and uh, to own the name, and there were already other applications with that name. So we, uh, we searched for names, and uh, I don't know, I think it's one day I was, uh, while I was taking a shower, actually. Best ideas in the shower on the top of a mountain, and, or uh, after. And, and, and I came up with fire chat, it's obvious. It needs to be fire chat. And, uh, is that because of the revolutionary spirit? You see, there's a theme here, right? Yes, but it was not because of that. Why not for chat? <laughs> for chat. Sorry, that's, that's a bit rude. Yeah, 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 yeah. French, it's very rude. Yeah, you sorry. could reverse the words, it would be even yeah, yeah, worse. Yeah, even but, worse, I'm sorry. Uh, but I, uh, no, I, um, I, I just thought it, it, it sounded good, so uh, because I am not uh, an English native speaker, I asked my team and I said, well, yeah, that's cool. Let's go for fire chat. And I had the logo already, and I, I really liked but it. But I don't understand the logo, because the logo looks like you're having a conversation, but fire chat is sending text. So the, if, if I did this to most people around the world, it means yeah. let's chat. Yeah. Let's so talk. the Aloha sign, is, the Shaka sign is uh, to say hello. It's cool, it's the hang loose, hi, hello. It's this cool. is a San Francisco thing. Hawaiian thing. Hawaiian thing. Hawaii. Canadian thing. It's a surfer thing. Surfer. surfer. Sorry, surfer. surfer. Yeah, surfer. You're a surfer, right? <laughs> I wish I Anyway, so, so it's so right. So you have a very complicated peer-to-peer -peer mesh network. Then you go, let's just chuck this out and see what happens. So we and suddenly you get huge amounts of attention. Mm -hmm. And you go, fuck that peer network. I'm going to do fire chat. No. Or you say, oh no, la it, vache. It, it, well, how, how do you? Well, what, what then happens? You know, in the in the startup world, there's a word that got invented in America called pivot which basically means I don't know what my business model is, so I'll try something new. Are you pivoting? No. The thing is when you, uh, you, you build a, a network that's made of um, people, smart devices, um, you need huge adoption. And uh, so you have to find, find ways to be installed on smartphones. And uh, but this, this, this needs, peer-to-peer -peer mesh networks need smartphones? I mean, we're in a world where, uh, you know, you've got people walking around with smart glasses and smart watches and hopefully smart underpants. Yeah, but the point so that, you know, so why, why do you have to leverage smart watches? I mean, smart phones. Because the power of this uh, mesh networking has been existing for many years. The power of uh, Open Garden and, and FireChat is it's a simple app. It's 100% software. It can sit on every device that... Uh, um, basically can host an app. And that's so you're saying that the mesh network's been there, but nobody's known what to do with it? The technology was there, but mainly implemented onto hardware, so very complex implementation. Yeah. We, we Who was using mesh networks before? So you, you, you have some cities or villages or remote areas that have been trying to put some uh, infrastructure made uh, using mesh networking. And they're doing it for just to connect to the internet, or they're doing it for other purposes. I mean, is it distribute the internet connectivity? Okay. Mainly, you have some uh, cities who adopted it for um, um, on the lights. You know, you have a longer road, for yeah. example, uh, just to have uh, information going from one light to another. And uh, oh, is that Li-Fi? I've heard this term Li-Fi, which is using Wi-Fi via lights. Is that? Th that's different. That's uh, a way to. Um, to uh, actually provide the connectivity uh, using the, the, the light instead of using a, a radio signal. Okay, so let's go back to your, your mesh network. Basically, somebody with a smartphone can connect. What happens if you have a feature phone or not a, a silly phone? What's the opposite of a smartphone? Feature phone. So we have Stupid phone. We haven't developed for feature phones. Uh, that's because we believe that the price of smartphone is going 
fast. Uh, I mean, it's going down pretty Yeah, thanks to companies like Lenovo, our cousins across the border, Lenovo, to Lenovo and Huawei. Huawei and yeah. uh, ZTE and all these, um, these, these manufacturers. And uh, I believe, I mean, smartphone are just, why would you have a, a feature phone when for the same price you can get a, a smartphone? So, right, so you're asking people to, to download it. In this case in Hong Kong, there's an emotional reason to do it, right? I do this. Do you think that people downloaded it with the wrong reason? Was there a sense in the beginning that if I do this, I'm off the network, right? I'm off, I can do this without anybody watching me. Because I remember when I first downloaded it, it was like, ooh, this is great, I'm kind of, I'm off plan, right? You know, I'm part of the revolution. I think it's But I saw some, your guys saying, actually, no, you're, it's not private. So all the conversations are public on FireChat, and uh, it has meant to be an entertainment app. Uh, but for what's happening off the grid, if you are not connected to the internet, it's actually very difficult to, uh, to know what's happening unless you're in the local network and you share the same uh, rooms. Um, otherwise, uh, what's happening on the internet is like, yeah, it's like a Twitter or any uh, big social platform. So wait, are you saying if I have a private room and I'm doing it locally through Bluetooth, that content doesn't go onto the internet. So they are not private rooms. They're only you can create a room and you yeah. can have people joining these rooms. Yeah, but Jay set up an Occupy Web Wednesday and he tried to overthrow me. <laughs> the night's young. And it was very successful. I'm not going home to <laughs> so, so what's so, happening off the internet? Basically, uh, we we have no idea of the conversation that happened there. So so if I have a conversation with Jay through Bluetooth, you won't know what that conversation. No, not Bluetooth. Listen, it's not, it's not using Bluetooth. We, we, so we use all the radios on the phone. We use Bluetooth, Bluetooth LE, Wi-Fi Direct, uh, AirDrop on iOS. So all the different. Okay. So anybody can go and set it up. So what? What? Do, so right. So when people first started, they're like, oh, this is great. I can do this off the network. What do you think was the reason they were doing it? So I think they come back to the two main reasons. I think the app got so much um, traction here. Is one, you can quickly spread the information on the mobile, and everyone were in the street, was in the street. So you need uh, to access that information in an easy way, be alerted easily and uh, notified, and that's what the app does when you are connected to the internet. The second thing is, when you have this big gathering, what happened on Sunday, and I clearly saw some statistics online, you could see the cellular network was up, and suddenly went down. Uh, no one was able to, to be connected to the internet. So then in this situation, people can keep on exchanging information, and. Uh, Sending information, receiving information. So that's. I so did you see when the cellular network went down? You saw more people using FireChat. We saw a lot of people on FireChat, yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, but we don't see the one that were offline. We see the one that were still connected. Yeah. Um, so I think that's the the main reason why also people install the app. And then I think there is a an emotional attachment to the app. And I, I was explaining to a, a, a reporter uh, before that. Uh, I think there is a, this app can have a strong impact uh, because it, it, it's very emotional um, and you can see about the conversation and what people are saying about it. I think it's, a, it's really a, a, a symbol of people growing their own internet. Basically, nothing can stop us. Uh, we isn't it, isn't it like way. harking back to the old days of the internet where you're in a you know, chat room or IRC or whatever and you're, you're anonymous and you're hanging out and you're That's having these... You're having all these like you know really weird conversations with people you've never met. Is it not basically reliving the past? I'm not saying there's no value in that, but you, you are completely right, and that's what's happening when you are connected to the internet, and that's why I think the app is addictive. Um, because I mean, if you if you look at the conversation when you're on the internet and in a room, I mean, we see people spending so much time on it that they get addicted to it. So, but the big difference, and we noticed it when we launched the application, is. Today you have more people that discover internet for the first time from their mobile phone uh, compared to the, from a laptop or a, or, or a desktop computer like it used to be in the past uh, from at the time of our, for example. China. I can see that in countries like China. In Hong Kong, remember, we were quite advanced in terms of that. But So how many people have actually are using it now, not at not this very moment? It's uh, several millions. Um, in Hong Kong? In Hong Kong, it's more than half a million people. Downloaded it. Open an account, yeah. So, out of those, do you see repeat usage, or is it is it because it's very linked to to what's going on in the streets? Do you see it kind of peak, and then it's a bit like what happens in the streets? You come out in the morning, everybody's gone to work. Come out in the evening, they're all out on the streets. Are you seeing 
Is it reflecting what's happening in the city? It is. It is. It is. And what are you going to do when this all dies down? So we, uh, I mean, the goal is to improve uh, the user experience because it's pretty rough app today, uh, and there is a lot to do to actually uh, bring back the users and make it more and more useful. So we, uh, this week, because of also the events and the protest, we we wanted to uh, introduce the verified accounts. So. People who are posting a lot of information can be trusted sources. So for reporters, for uh, celebrities. Uh, but are you? Are you? Because I've tried to, you know, look at various groups. Mm -hmm. Are the other trusted sources using it? Because at one stage it was a bit nuts. I mean, there's all kinds of rumors and stuff, right? Other, other people setting up, you know, trusted groups and stuff like that. So now. When I, mean, I saw there was, you know, Team Tong, there was like. Jay Oatway, there was you know, all kinds of sources. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, so the, we, we started to collect the people, uh, information from the people who wanted to be verified, and it's going to be featured in the app uh, in the coming weeks. So did these student leaders say, hey, I want an account? What's his name, Joseph Wang? Or, or jo jo what's, what's the leader called? Joshua. Joshua, Joshua sorry, it was close. Joseph, Joshua. Did Joshua say, oi, mate, I want, I want a verified account? Joshua has to send an email to verify that uh, opengarden.com. Is Joshua using it? Uh, most probably. I would love him to very get verified. <laughs> so you're here, you're in this turmoil, and suddenly every journalist wants to talk to you. Is that not a weird sensation? I mean, I sent out an email to 4,000 people, and you spent the whole afternoon talking to journalists, thanks to my email. Remember Thank that. Thank you. <laughs> Remember that. Pay forward. Yeah? I have no idea what you're talking about. Pay forward, yeah. So, why? Why? Is it not a bit stunning? You came here on, on, on a standby or whatever. I mean, Transition. <laughs> and now you've got the journalists of the world talking to you. So, I mean, it's, uh, it's my job. <laughs> what, to talk to journalists? Yeah, my job is to raise money for the company and to, to communicate for the company, yeah. I thought you had a marketing director for that. You have a CMO, right? I have, uh, yes, Christoph, uh, yeah. and uh, I have my co-founders too, and I think uh, I've been doing this week with the three of us, where uh, a lot with the reporters. And, uh, yeah. No, but I'm just curious, because in Hong Kong we have a lot of startups, right? And the problem they have is getting traction. Great ideas, you know, we're, a lot of people in this room are involved in the startup community in different ways. But they have great ideas and some dull ideas, but they, the problem they have is getting the world to pay attention. And ironically, the problem they have is getting traditional media to pay attention. You come here on transit, there's students in the street, and suddenly every journalist wants to talk to you. Isn't that, you know, are you, are you it's, luck. It's, it's luck. It's luck. Timing. <coughs> it's luck, but I mean, like uh, anything, and I've been verifying that uh, in my uh, uh, life as an entrepreneur for many years, uh, I mean, you create, you create the luck. I mean, so let's talk about the entrepreneurial it's bit, because it's luck, right? Yeah. Tell us a little bit about, you know, you, you had, have you raised, how did you start this and where did you, where did you come from? You were, a, from your LinkedIn profile, you know, you had a digital agency or you were helping Skype, set up Skype in and Skype out in Europe. Were you working for Skype or they were a client or? And I had a company in the field of voice over IP and I, I was lucky also at that time. I met with the Skype founders, no mobile operator wanted to work with them. And I happened to uh, have my own telecom route and uh, and I, when I met with Niklas, I said, oh, well, if that's what you want, I mean, I can open you the communications to the world, Skype out uh, in 10 days. I said, okay, let's do it. And so you set up the whole Skype out, the idea that you could have a telephone number that you can connect yes. to the network. Yes. Cheers, man. It was fun. Who here has used Skype out? <laughs> Ten times. That's cool, right? Thank you. Um, and so, yeah, so how does that kind of transition into what you're doing now? You're going, oh la vache, I'm out of France, I'm off to San Francisco with the web. So I, I, I studied in San Francisco uh, and uh, I always wanted to come back to that city because I, I think there is a, a great energy for entrepreneurship. It's a beautiful place also to live. And, um, Not as beautiful as Hong Kong. <laughs> I, I, I think I fell, in love with, uh, I fell in love with Hong Kong. So Excellent. Hong Kong may be my next uh, stop. And uh, so all that to say that, uh, yeah, so I, I arrived in the US, I wanted to create this company, it took us, nobody believed in the idea, uh, so the, the, really the vision was, okay, we're gonna 
uh, turn each of these smartphones into internet nodes and uh, connect, interconnect them to create an, uh, an extension of the internet that would uh, help uh, people connect better to the internet more often. And all the VCs were looking at me, oh, but you're silly, it's never going to work, there's too much technology, it's impossible to build. So it took me a year to actually gather the first million dollars. I think I did 90 meetings and I got 15 angels. So what was your proposition at the time? You're like, what you said, I'm going to connect all the, all the phones and create another network. Is that your proposition? That was my proposition and uh, that in Silicon Valley there's a process that's called the, uh, that you have the Lean Startup process and you have the minimal viable product. So what we did at the very beginning is we took an open source app that was just enabling to turn your smartphone into a hotspot. Uh, just to verify the appetite for mobile bandwidth. And we, we took the existing code, we just rebranded it Open Garden, and we shipped it on the market. And uh, after a month, we got more than 10,000 people using the app with, without doing any marketing. And quickly, the second or third month was more than 100,000 people. So wait, you have to download the app in order to turn your phone into a hotspot. Is that it? Yeah. And you had to be a bit techy because you had to be administrator on your phone. And because the, okay. the carriers in the US were locking that feature. Okay. So the app was enabling you, if you were a bit geek, to unlock that feature and basically yeah. turn your phone into a hotspot. Um, so we quickly verified the appetite for mobile bandwidth, and from there, when I was doing my meetings, obviously we had the, or the vision, but we had, we could say, oh, we have already uh, 200,000 people who use our application, uh, but that's just uh, a minimal viable product that shows that there is interest in what we want to do. Um, Are people doing this? Because they just wanted to share their bandwidth, or? Because they had to pay otherwise $50 a month to share their mobile bandwidth they were already paying for. Oh, I see. So it was a price thing? Yes. So they used you because it was free? For, to no. dongle or whatever? Absolutely. Toggle. Absolutely. Is it dongle or toggle? It was. I don't understand the vocabulary. Toggle, toggle. The, um, when I offer my bandwidth to you, what am I doing? The tether. Tethering? The tethering. Tethering. Yeah, tethering. Thank you. <laughs> See, too many words out there. So, right. yes. so you basically went and let people offer their bandwidth for free, whereas before they got charged to offer their bandwidth. They were charged for the feature and uh, of being able to sh use the bandwidth they were already paying for uh, the, the way they want. Okay. Yeah. So 90 meetings, uh, out of that 15 angels who put the first million dollar, um, and uh, last minute was like seven days before TechCrunch in New York in 2012. Uh, they were missing some tech, very tech startup because they were only having startup, but they, they saw it was not techy enough to for the for the event. So they invite us to be final, I mean, be participating to the to the final uh, competition at in New York TechCrunch. So that was really a really great opportunity, and so we we we, we fight like crazy, and uh, uh, we won the most innovative startup prize. And after that, we got another. Who, who were you up against? Snapchat. We were against uh, no not Snapchat. Anybody have noticed? Maybe you heard about uh, Uber Conference or no okay. Uber Uber Conference. Yeah. What's Uber Conference? It's uh, you share it, conferences. It's just um, creating conferences for your business. Is it? Okay. So you won. So we Brilliant. won the most innovative startup prize. Uh, it was not the first prize in the competition. Were you shocked? No, because we should have won actually the first prize. Uh, we didn't for some politi like that politi political reasons. And, uh, but it's okay because we won the most innovative. So we didn't get the $50,000 check, but we got all the attention. And uh, right after, someone um, who read an article we had in Business Week uh, calls me and says, uh, how much money do you, do you want? And I say, oh, I'm missing a million dollars for, for my seed one. Thank you. And uh, it took us 45 minutes. So. So it took you one year to raise a million, and 45 minutes to raise two million, or well, the second million? The second million, yes. What happened? Did they all come in like, was it like a rock star? What was the feeling? Was it like being a rock star? You know, in the changing rooms? I mean... For all the venture capitalists there, no, you know, I, I, saying, here's my check, take my check, take my check. A bit like Tom Jones in underwear. You, you won't understand that reference. So the... Johnny, Johnny, Johnny... What, what's the French guy called? Anyday. Holiday, Johnny Holiday. Okay, yeah. So the member. Yeah, yeah. So we had Fred Wilson who said great, uh, great things about us during that competition. And that, and that just means people want to give you money. Uh, I think he really liked what we were doing. He thought it was a bit early for him to invest. But, uh, so what are you seeing now? Now that you've been in Hong Kong and you've got every journalist talking to you, are, are, are people saying, 
is a check. Are you seeing people from Asia, investors from Asia, saying, I love what you're doing. Here's a million dollars. Is Lee Kai Singh talking to you? So Mate, if you can talk to Lee Kai Singh, you're on to something. Um, I mean, I, I would love to speak with him. I would love to speak with uh, any people. Do you want to say that again? Say it one more time. I would love to speak with him directly, yeah. All right. <laughs> um, He's invested in a lot. He invested in something. You know the 17-year-old boy in London who invented a, an app? Yes, yeah, something. That he sold to Yahoo, yeah. something. He invested in something. Yeah, I saw that Lee story. Kai Singh was an investor. I saw that story, yeah. So why is he not investing in Firechat? Or Open Garden? Because if he wants, he will.